Okay, so my session is about storytelling and we just went around there and everybody has an amazing story about flying. I think the best story there was Steve Varden, so I'm going to give him my vote. He's the winner. Uh, nine loops in a sailplane with Guy Westgate. Yeah, I think he wins. Okay, with the North Face and Mont Blanc, the next one. So, why should I tell my story? Why should we, as a collective sport, tell our stories? And the first reason is because what we do is amazing. We all have extraordinary tales to tell. You all think you do a normal thing. We all do an absolutely insane, crazy thing, whether it's paragliding, hang gliding, ballooning, whatever. Very small numbers of people want to do what we want to do. Every flight is unique. Every takeoff, almost out of this world. Uh, Jockey remembers his first takeoff. What was your first takeoff? Uh, paragliding. Yeah. I was towed up by my friends and family on a piece of rope. And what did you feel like? Amazing. Amazing! Because it tells us it's amazing, right? There we go. So that is rare, and in a way that is important in itself. Um, we live in a country which is dominated in sport by football, cricket, rugby, the Olympics, and that's it. Um, but that is no reason not to tell our story. Uh, there is an audience of interested people out there. Um, the examples I put in your notes here, Felix Baumgartner, when he jumped from space, years ago, five, six years ago. He has eight million people watch him on YouTube live straight away. Wingsuiting videos reach millions of people. Tucker Gott, who is a 22-year-old paramotor pilot, he started his YouTube channel a year ago. He's got half a million subscribers on YouTube. There's not half a million paramotor pilots in the world, but they're all interested in what he's doing, and it's because of how he tells his story. The Red Bull X Alps is classic. It reaches hundreds of thousands of people every time it happens. But the main reason we should tell our story, I think, is because it is part of how we all learn collectively. The best way to tell a story, in a pub, to your mates, there I was. You know, it's the classic tale. So, how do you tell your stories? There is no end of choice today in how you can tell your story. In the old days, we had to write them down, we had to pour lead into moulds and put it on paper and print it off. Now you can do that, you can do text, you can do photography. Who here takes photographs when they go flying? From the air? Okay. Who takes video? Yeah. Who logs their flights in a league? Okay. Who writes up those flights in the sort of little flight report box? Ah, nobody. Right, audio, podcasting, that's a, that's a big thing. Look at Gavin McClurg. Who listens to Gavin McClurg's podcast? A few. If I urge you to listen to Gavin McClurg, McClurg's podcast. They're absolutely amazing. Jockey, have you been interviewed yeah. by him? Right, he's amazing. Yeah. And the reason is he's so good is because he's focused on his niche and he's gone, I love podcasts. There is no podcast about flight. I'm going to do it. Um, listen to his podcasts. He's got about 50 amazing pilots on there. Um, each one an hour, an hour and a half long. And you will learn so much about it. And that's what storytelling is about. It's about learning. It's not about bragging or saying I'm the best or I flew off the highest mountain or whatever. It's about learning and collectively advancing as a sport. And of course that means being safer and having more people involved and having more fun. And of course online you can do animation. You can do animation with Durarama, Track Logs and Google Earth. Um, who knows about Durarama? Who, what, who, who, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, who's put their flight into Durarama and watched it? And then you share it with other people and you're like, oh, wow, that's really good. That's really exciting. You know, it's awesome. It's an awesome tool. As is Google Earth. So how do you publish your story? There are an unlimited number of ways to publish your stories and to reach people. Social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Who's on Facebook? Who's not on Facebook? Okay. Who's on Twitter? Two. Who's on Instagram? Hmm. Um, YouTube, anyone that go to YouTube? Quite a lot on YouTube, yeah, yeah. He's a YouTube man, you've got your own YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> online, blogs, forums, websites, the XE League storyboard. If you put your flights into the XE League, Fill out that little storyboard thing. It's an amazing learning tool. It's amazing to read. Oh, they, 
It doesn't matter if you went 99.5 instead of 101, you know, or even 9.5 instead of 101. What we want to learn is, what we want to hear is just how it, how it went. How was it for you? You know, there's no right or wrong. There's no winners or losers. And of course, finally on that list, um, barring the BBC, it, magazines and journals, which is uh, what I'm involved in, the Cross Country Magazine, there are a couple of them about. Who gets Cross Country Magazine? Hmm. Right. <laughs> 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 Who used to get Cross Country Magazine? Okay. Who gets it in print? Who gets it on digital only? I get given copies. Oh, you get given copies. Okay. So, <laughs> who, that's fine as well. Who doesn't know about Cross Country Magazine? Everyone heard about Cross Country Magazine. That's what we care about. Right. So, now the hard part. What do I put in my story? And it's a cliche, but it's true. You have to write about what you know. Your experience, your flying site, your flying off the north face of Mont Blanc, your nine loops in a sailplane, um, your big day out. You don't have to do a massive thing to write about a story and make it a great story, to tell a great little tale. Um, but it has to be you. And really that starts with you being honest. Flying is a great thing for making you honest, as we all know. We have to look at what we do and how we're doing it and the motivation and all that stuff. And there's a whole head thing that goes on in flying. And if you're dishonest in that, if you're chasing flying for the wrong reasons, it, you'll get caught out like that, pretty much. It's the same with writing or podcasting or even photography, uh, filming. You've got to be taking an honest look at what you're trying to say. And then you're presenting it. Um, because stories are really just a clear way of thinking. Storytelling is just a clear way of thinking about something and then telling the story. If you get your thoughts muddled, you will tell a muddled story. If you get your thoughts and your ducks in a row, then you will, your story will have impact, whatever it is about. Um, all stories have the same basic ingredients. Answer these questions with facts and your story will tell itself. And those five, six actually, who was involved? What happened? Why is it important? Where did it take place? When did it happen? And how did it happen? How did it, ha how did it turn out? Those are the fundamentals of journalism and reporting. And that's what all journalists and all news gatherers and all news people get taught absolutely day one, the five W's, um, research and reporting. They underpin all storytelling. And natural storytellers get that. They tell it all. Oh, he did this and he was there and he was at 8,000 meters and da 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 Goes on and on and on. But if you're struggling in how to tell your story of flying over Broad Peak at 8,000 meters, then you just answer those. Who was involved? Well, I did it. Nobody else. I did it solo. You know, that's a story in itself. I was alone. Uh, what happened? Well, I was at 8,000 meters. That's a world first. That's amazing. That's a massive story. And on it goes. If you just tell those things, you've got your story. Um, that thing there, I put that there for people who want to uh, follow up. That's called the inverted pyramid of news and all news works like that. Everything you read on your phone or in an old school newspaper has that who, what, when, where, why, how right at the top for news stories. And what that means is you have to think about what you're trying to say as if the lift doors are closing. Right? So the doors are open and they're closing. And I'm shouting at you, Kriegel Mara has won the x for the fifth time. Right? That's your story. What a lot of people do when they get into storytelling or they're trying to write or they get lost, they get lost in all the weeds. They say something like this, the weather was nice on the final day of the x Alps, which finished on Saturday, three days ago. As dawn rose at the back, the last pilot was busy preparing for tea while in the middle there was a lot going on. Meanwhile, out at the front, Kriegel Maurer won the x Alps by crossing the line first. It, 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 I think it was his fifth time that he'd done it. You know, that's called burying the story and no one's going to listen to you until you get to the end of it. You've got to shout at the beginning. This is what happened. 
That was interesting, that exercise we did at the start, wasn't it? Where everyone said, yeah, well, the best adventure, I flew off the north face of Mont Blanc. You know, I flew off over the back of the Cairngorms and had a five and a half, five and a half hour walk, walk out. Um, that's what you're trying to do with storytelling, whether it's photography, film, uh, or print. Longer stories are called features. Those of you who get Cross Country Magazine will see we have a lot of features. Um, it's all about adventure and travel and how to and all that sort of stuff. You treat a feature as you would when telling a good story in the pub. You don't want to use long words, you just want to chat, basically. I've got there the 10 second style guide. Um, write simply, like you talk in the pub or on the hill. Don't use a long word when a short word will do. Keep sentences short, 25 words and under. A lot of people come out of school and they think, what was English all about? I can't, I don't know what it was all about. Forget about that. Forget about structure and sentences and grammar and all that. That's what editors do. They fix all that. If you're worried about that, just do short sentences and make three sentences a paragraph and that's it. If you don't want to use full stops, don't use full stops. But just get your story down on the page, especially if you've got something that you want to say and you want to write about. Um, describe things are they, as they are. That's the sort of a little thing that you can learn and it's good for all, it's, it's what we do in flying actually. You look at a cloud and you go, what is that cloud doing? Well, it looks like that, you know? It's a storm cloud or whatever. Um, you look at something, you look at your apple, is it red or green? Where is the color on the left or the right? That, you know, you just take note of things. Um, and then more into feature writing. Use quotes to bring an article alive. If you speak to someone up in beer, who is the fellow who's in beer? One of you guys was in beer, you were in beer. And you're out in the shepherd's hut look, being looked after by locals and all that sort of stuff, you know. If you put that into a story, or if you're videoing it, you know, get the guy to speak to camera. Get them to tell the story. Um, finally, pause and review. Don't just press publish because you think that's wicked, I've done it, I've sorted it, it's all, uh, you know. Take a moment, step back, have a look at it and think, well, I'll look at it tomorrow and then I'll fix it up, maybe edit it and then one we go. Finally, is there anyone who actually writes? There we go, Ian, Steve, Jockey writes, Jockey's a very good writer. What do editors look for? The main thing there, you can look through the rest, um, is ideas. If you've got a good idea and you take that to someone, whether it's the editor of Cross Country Magazine or it's the boss of the BBC, if the idea is good, they will grab it, you know, if they're switched on. And if they don't like your idea, go to someone else <laughs> and keep going until you've got your idea and you say, this is a really good idea and they will help you hone your idea. But that is what you need. The key to the whole thing is ideas and the rest will follow. Right, any questions? No questions. Jockey. Hmm? Um, so as well as your story then, obviously yeah. great pictures. That's why pictures. I love cross country, yes. Yeah. great pictures sell a story. The whole thing that I just said there goes into pictures as well. Obviously I'm not a photographer, that was not a photographic um, talk. But yeah, photography, you're telling a story in a, in a photograph. What we love to look at, what we look for as editors in a magazine or anywhere really, is a picture that tells a story. So we would not publish a picture of a glider against a blue sky because we don't know where that is, where that is. It doesn't fulfill one of the five W's. We don't know where that is. It's just in the sky. But if you take it from above and you can see, oh, look, I'm above the pyramids in Egypt, then that's a big story because no one flies there, right? So it's about, again, answering those questions and it's trying to be a storyteller with your camera or with your video or with your pen. Does that answer that one? And then, of course, you have to know, with photography, you have to know a bit about uh, the production of the whole thing. So you need to understand pixel size is the main thing. So shoot a big high resolution picture and then cut down. You can't shoot a tiny picture on your camera and then hope for it to be blown up. It doesn't work like that. It comes the other way. There's a question? Um, this edition of Cross Country, yeah. the previous one, had a two-part story about a guy yeah. flying in Kishada. Oh my God, yeah. Um, and I, it's the best thing I've ever read I will tell all these years. Um, yeah. And I just wondered if, if 
if you could provide any insight as to why that might be. Hard. Why? I tell you, because that guy takes so, you know, he has his own toads, yeah. right? And he licks his toads. He's a, he's a complete psychedelic dude. You know Kiwi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kiwi, uh, Kiwi, Kiwi Johnson is the most, he's, he's actually a world expert on, I don't even know what it's called. He's written a book. He's written two books. It's DT, MP, DD, or whatever it is, right? And he takes massive amounts of this stuff that whacks his brain. <laughs> and he goes on huge trips through the ether. And then he comes out and he goes flying. <laughs> And then he writes the thing down. It's amazing. Kiwi's a great writer. He was a great writer before he started doing drugs. It's not an excuse to go and do loads of drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, he, he, his mind is open, let's say that. And he is, he's open, he is open to his experiences and he's honest and he's brave enough to put them down on paper. It's his honesty that gets, you've got to be honest. Yeah, yeah. He's in person, he strips you down with his honesty. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I imagine that. Yeah, you know that he. Um, what's that one in the big, big festival, Burning Man yeah, festival? He's got, the, he's got his own he truck in Bur Burning Man. You know, he's got a whole tribe of people. He looks a bit like you, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bald head and the little beards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Any more cues? Because mine was only meant to be short. Two o'clock. Jockey, you are next. Oh, my biggest flow in the adventure was taking off the first time. I mean, I, I absolutely remember. That's so rubbish. We had that one. Okay, my, I had a, I've, my biggest adventure was crashing downwind on a rocky moraine at 4,000 meters in the Himalaya when I was 20. How about that? And surviving! Hooray! Still here. Right. Um, okay, any more? Uh, yeah, I have one. What's the general process for someone submitting a story and then going through the whole editing and publishing? Like, what's the time scale? Oh my God. What, what, what? You doing cross country? Yeah, yeah, with cross country. Oh, it just takes forever. I have to answer my emails first. Well, like, for instance, that you shared our story, yeah. especially because it was so big, it came up to different issues. Was yeah. that like six months ago, three months ago, one month ago? Well, again, he said, I'm going to write this, I'm going to write this, I'm going to write this for a long time. And then he said, it's going to be 10,000 words long. And I, we had a process where I was like, please don't send me 10,000 words. And then he said, I'm just going to send you 10,000 words. And I said, okay. And then he wrote one. And then I said, well, we can't just have one piece. We have to have the other piece. So it's a long process and it's based on him. If he'd gone present here, perfect copy to, you know, this is it. This is the package. We would have snapped it up. But because there's a whole lengthy process. A lot of what we do at Cross Country actually is we have a very few professionals um, that work in the sport in making um, pictures and video and all that sort of stuff. But all of our stuff is pilot produced. And we work with pilots who have stories all the time. And when I say work with, I mean we correspond on email or Skype. Um, we don't sit there like this because we're all in the cloud. But, you know, if you come to me with an idea and go, I want to write this story I remember <laughs> looping nine times with... Uh, with Guy Westgate, then we'll help you write that, or we'll talk to you, or interview, or, or all that. That's how I got to know Antoine, actually, is because when he flew over uh, Broad Peak, we sat in my flat and I interviewed him on Skype about it, because obviously he doesn't write in English, and we sort of pull the story out of him. We look at the track logs, and we, um, I sat with a French friend of mine, and we sort of talked it all through and, until we understood exactly what is going on, and then we're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you've done that, it's amazing. So, and that's part of the job, what I enjoy, and it's more, I enjoy working with people and helping them tell their stories, more than when you're in, just in the newsroom working with a bunch of professionals, everyone's very cynical and bored, and, you know, let's get on with the next one and trust someone else's life. Um, <laughs> mainstream media. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.